Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Power Is Now Homeownership Series. My name is Eric Frazier. It's a beautiful day in Southern California and a great day to talk about homeownership. Folks, we have started a homeownership series and it started June 1 and is going through the whole month and man, oh man, has it been impactful. Many people are inspired by the stories of, of homeownership from real estate professionals to first time home buyers to industry leaders, folks. You're getting the 411 on their struggles uh, their barriers, their challenges, and their victories as it relates to home ownership. Now, June is Home Ownership Month. It's also Juneteenth, which is now a national holiday. It's also Pride Month. Uh, it's just a great opportunity to talk about home ownership because it's important to everybody, irrespective of race, color, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity. Everybody should own a home. And uh, we're getting some great advice on what you can do to own a home today in the month of June. With us today is Adrienne Bates. She's a VIP agent on The Power Is Now and also an extraordinary real estate professional and broker out of Los Angeles. She graduated from Cal State University with a BA in psychology and a minor in business in 1980. She is formerly an aerospace contract negotiator, became a real estate agent in 1985 and then a broker in 1990. In April of 1995, property sales across America were on a serious downturn. Yet a young and determined Adrian Bates opened A1 Realty in Los Angeles, California, and with sheer determination and the help of God, she was able to grow her team to 11 agents by November of 1996. And then from then on, she's worked diligently to improve her skills, uh, to be able to better serve her community. Uh, and she is also an experienced loan officer. In addition to being a real estate agent, she's an experienced loan officer, having worked with Wells Fargo and also managed REO properties for Chase Bank, Atlas REO, Green River, Aquin. She has experience in handling BPOs, cash for keys, asset management, evictions, and working with appraisers and title companies and cooperative real estate brokers. Uh, she has a variety of certifications in short sales, foreclosure, FHA, VA financing. She specializes in home buying and selling of probates, of reverse mortgages, trust sales, bank repos, units, and 1031 exchanges. With over 25 years of experience in working in the real estate industry in Southern California, Adrian has no plans to retire at any time soon. Uh, she thoroughly loves what she does and has received countless awards for her dedication in providing A1 service, hence A1 Realty. Welcome, Adrian Bates, to the Power Is Now Homeownership Series. Thank you, Eric. So good to, to see you today, and thanks for having me. I appreciate it. The pleasure is all mine, uh, Adrian, and we appreciate you uh, for the wealth of experience and knowledge you bring to the Power Is Now media. Uh, Adrian, folks, is also a VIP agent, and you can find interviews, seminars, uh, her participation in online TV programs like our Home Bar Town Hall and our Real Estate Roundtable. Uh, she is engaged with the Power Is Now media providing her expertise. And you know, that's what experts do. She's a, she's a VIP agent on the powers now. Now, Adrian, because you are a VIP agent, you know how we roll here. We have this question we ask. It's a tradition. What does the phrase, the power is now, mean to you in the context of who you are and what you do professionally? Well, thank you for asking because I believe the, the power is now. What that means to me is it is the right time to buy, move, and do. It's the anointed time for, for all our buyers and sellers to whatever their change is, 
The power is now and it is the anointed time. And we must listen to that small voice that we hear and move, do, and buy. The power is now. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, I love that phrase, the anointed time, right? Yeah, I mean, um, somehow it kind of resonates in our spirit that this is the time to do this or to do that or to yeah. go here or to go there. You know, it, it just, it, we feel it in our spirit and our bones that now is the time, you know, God is speaking to me. The universe is speaking to me. Yeah. It is the anointed time. <laughs> I but like you that. know, Eric, sometimes people just don't listen to, and I'm guilty of it also, you hear that small voice edging you to do something, you say, oh, I'm going to do it, and you put it off, and then you don't do it, but right now for home ownership, you couldn't ask for a better time to buy, I mean, the interest rates, you know, the time is now to move, to buy, to do, to be, you know, and that's why I say the power is now, and it is for the anointed time, and the anointed time is now. <laughs> Outstanding, Adrian. Now, Adrian, how long have you been in the business, and how did you actually get into the real estate game? Oh, I've been in, I've been licensed for, uh, let's say, over 30 years. I'm real young, though, when I tell you that. I've uh, been licensed for 30 years. Uh, I started off as a real estate investor buying, um, I, I got married at a young age and at 23, I bought my first piece of property. It was a three unit building in Los Angeles. So I bought a three unit. Then we bought a two unit and we lived in the two unit and then we bought a four unit. And um, I fell in love with real estate and I started off as an investor. And then uh, my husband at the time had a great idea for us to go to real estate school. I finished, he didn't. And I became, uh, uh, I had always had my license, but I wasn't ready to go full time. At that time I worked in aerospace uh, for a number of years for, as a contract negotiator. And uh, one day it just hit me that I just fell in love totally with real estate and investment and helping people, helping people build generational wealth and home ownership. And so that's how I kind of got started as an investor. Now, uh, I think I'm in your club. You got married, you said at a young age. How old were you when you, when you got married? 23. Oh, 23. Okay, I got yeah. you beat. I was, at, I was 19. Okay, you got me beat. <laughs> So when you got married to your husband, so you were married with children or, or just, just? No, married? no, that was my first marriage. And um, I did, we stayed married for a number of years and then we got divorced. You know, we were very young. I see. And then I met my, uh, my daughter's uh, father and fell in love and got married. And um, we had a child together and then I, he had two children and um, two girls. So I always say I have three girls and I got my girls, uh, his two daughters, uh, Camille and uh, Jasmine. At, I think they were like six and eight. So they've been with me a long time. Love them dearly. Those are my girls. And then my daughter now is uh, 32. So I always say I have three girls because those are my girls. That's awesome. So when did you start you know, renting? I mean, you got married and, and then uh, were you renting or were you maybe staying at, with your parents? I mean, describe the circumstances uh, by which you came to rent and how long were you renting mm -hmm. before you bought your first house? Well, I moved out, I was the oldest of three. And uh, when I started school, um, I was working for uh, the grocery store, uh, Ralph's Market. And uh, I moved in with three other girls and I rented probably from age 18, almost 19, until I got married at 23. So about five, six years. Wow. Okay. So you rented from about 18 to 23. Yeah. So you bought your first home at the tender age of 23. Yeah, it was three units. We bought three units. Wow. And, and then after that, we bought three units. We bought a duplex that we lived in, stopped renting. 
and then we bought four units. And now, then where, where did this financial literacy come from? You know, in terms of buying real estate at such a young age, you know, I I know a lot of young people. I'm sure you do too, and they just don't have that that mindset. And they're super smart kids, right? Especially yeah. today, but they don't have that that financial literacy, that mindset. And actually, uh, let me rephrase that because many of them love the market, right? They're in love with Susie Arman and. And all these guys who are into cryptocurrency and investing in stocks and that kind of thing. But real estate, um, it just seems like uh, it's a struggle. Yes, it is. Uh, but, you know, I think some of our children don't know about financial literacy and no one's really talked about money. And it's very important to talk about money and credit. And so, you know, it's very important for I believe, uh, I, they've done statistics, Eric, on uh, children that were brought up in a home, home seem to be more stable. And I got that from my mom and dad. I've always, um, you know, we lived in a home. Mother uh, believed in home ownership, and so did my dad. And we always lived in a home, so it was a very stable environment. And when you, I had uh, a father-in-law, he did not ever own his home and he was a vet and I'm like dad let me help you buy a home for the family or buy some units and so he rented his entire life and raised six children in an apartment and thank god uh, I would say at least three or four of them uh, ended up with my encouragement and their own encouragement and they bought homes and once my father-in-law passed I helped my mother-in-law and uh, one of, uh, and her daughter, my sister-in-law, buy a home. And I'm telling you, I said, Grandma, what do you want? She said, Adrian, I want a home. And at 70 some odd years old, we, we fulfilled her home ownership and she's loving it. And so home ownership came from my parents uh, about having a home. You don't have to move. You're building generational wealth. It's a stable environment for your children. You're teaching them about caring for a valuable asset. Like my dad always taught us how to wash a car. You know, if you get a car, take care of it. My mom always said, you know, fix the things that are wrong. You know, always have pride of ownership. And so that's how I fell in love with real estate. I have to say my parents and, and the village helped me love home ownership and having a stable environment. And I've been in my home for uh, my daughter, my youngest girl is 32. And I've been in my home for, oh, no, she's 33 now. And I've been in my home for uh, over 31 years, probably 32 years. And my, my family called, because my mother lived with us, um, the Nana and, um, all my nieces and nephew they, and my girls always say uh, they're coming over to the family home. And my nieces and nephews say, Auntie, your home is the family home. And that just warms my heart because we have had, we have had birthdays, we've had sleepovers, we've had, um, um, what is it? Uh, oh, bridal showers. You know, we've had, uh, yeah, birthdays, graduations, and we even had a memorial. Um, I lost my sister-in-law and uh, she wanted to have it uh, like a party, a celebration. And her daughters, um, I was truly honored that they said, Auntie, can we have my mother's celebration of life in your backyard? It was outstanding. And they turned my backyard into, oh my God, such a beautiful place. We had the DJ and we had the, um, with the dance, you know, it was wonderful. And my 94 year old auntie said to me as she was leaving, she says, Adrian, when I go home to be with the Lord, can we have my celebration in your backyard? So I'm truly honored that they feel, everyone feels comfortable. I try my very best to make the family and friends feel comfortable. And sometimes um, my team and I on a Friday, 
Eric, you can relate at the end of the month, which is so crazy and very um, stressful. I invite them over for a little libation and some good food and we laugh and we talk and it just, we always are thankful for our business and always thankful that what we do is um, we don't just sell real estate. We change people's lives. We, wow. you know, give them the keys to their dreams. So I'm very honored and I feel like I'm doing God's work by helping people. He says, you're more like him when you help people. And so that is truly my heart is to help more people all ages have their own home or own duplex or have a piece of the land. The land is extremely important. Plus you're building generational wealth for not only you, but also for your family. And you never know who you're gonna touch. And I'm just so grateful and thankful that I've been in the business over 30 years and I still love it. And it's so funny, my daughter, the uh, youngest asked me the other day, she said, mom, when are you going to retire? I said, probably never. I said, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. So I'm here to stay. Adrian, I am uh, just so impressed with your passion and uh, your life experience and why you have fallen in love with real estate and you think you're never going to retire because you love it so much. And I think it's important that as uh, regardless of the profession you're in, that you love what you do. That's and when right. you love what you do, it really comes across to those who you are serving. And also kudos to your dad. Uh, for instilling in you the values of homeownership, the importance of homeownership, being homeowners themselves. And I, I want to uh, talk to you more about that experience at home. Uh, but you said you were renting for about five years, from about 18 or 19 to 23. Uh, you finished school, got married, and bought a house. So did you go from, um, so you went from renting your own place, so you had your independence, and you yeah. bought a home. Was this the home that you truly wanted or did you just try to get in the game? No, we didn't buy a house. We bought a duplex. Oh, you bought a duplex. Uh -huh. We lived in one and that's why I always promote units, especially for um, my um, young, young couples that are starting off. Sometimes they can't afford a home. So I always say, let's buy, let's see, buy maybe buy two, three or four units, you know, whatever your desire is. So we bought a duplex, we lived in one and we rented the other one out. And so that helped us pay our mortgage. Wow, now that is such a smart way to go. And now where did you even learn that that was possible? Most people, especially first time home buyers, I think that, you know, I just wanna buy a house. They don't even know it's possible to buy a two, three or even a four unit apartment building and live in one. Where did you get this information? Well, my mom and my father always told me, always own where you lay your head. Always pay your rent on time, but own where you lay your head. So when you sleep at night, you own the place that you, you live. And that was always very important. And what I tried to do with my girls, uh, they each own a home. Uh, the two oldest own, and then my, my younger daughter, um, my biological daughter, she, um, uh, when she came out of um, Syracuse and bought her first place, it was a, uh, I told her the game plan was to buy four units, three units, two units, and then when she got married, then buy a home. And that way she would have um, money pay for her lifestyle and also have a, a tax write-off, which is extremely important. And so she, I was able to put her in three units and within two, three, about two years, she was almost living rent-free. That's amazing. And, and that the is tenants the, pay the rent. Right. I mean, that's the, the power. Yeah. That's the power of buying investment property. Yeah. You can eventually replace uh, your income working on the job uh, with the rents you're receiving from the other units uh, that uh, you're not living in. And so I, I want to be clear for our audience here. Where did you get this information? Did your parents own units too? Then who no, told they, you to do this? <laughs> no, no, they didn't own units. They always owned a home. 
And um, it's just that my dad always said, buy where you, you sleep. <laughs> so that has been instilled. And my, um, my oldest brother, he's owned his home for, oh my God, I put him and his family in a home probably 28, 30 years ago. So we both have always owned where we sleep, you know? It's just, uh, and that's what, you know, because with a, an apartment, it's so easy for someone to go up on your rent, number one, and number two, to tell you that um, you got to move. So yeah, yeah. home ownership uh, uh, is stability. And I like investment. I love units because it affords your lifestyle. You know about that, Eric. You know, it'll help pay a car note, write off tax, your taxes, uh, a, a family vacation to Europe, uh, savings for that college fund. And uh, that's, so, that's why it's so important um, to own units to help your lifestyle and the write-off more than anything. And Eric, don't you have a program that uh, our young folk or our folk can now buy with 3% down and they can buy one to four units? That's right. Actually, 3.5% down, uh, a person can buy a four-unit apartment building. And using the Golden State program, if they can find a four unit or a three unit or a two unit at 548,000 and less, and I would say 565, five, yeah, about seven, five, let's even go to 575. 575, Golden State will give you 5% for the down payment. They will give you that money at 575 purchase price. They will give you the money for the down payment. It's a loan, they forgive it after three years, and that can be a four unit, a three unit, or a two unit. And so, um, I, you know, the program is available, but I have to tell you, Adrian, I have yet to talk to anybody, first time home buyer, especially, that knows that they can do this. I'm always providing this information to them. Rarely do first time home buyers have the knowledge, and I'm just so impressed that you knew that that's what you wanted to do. You got the uh, inspiration from your parents and uh, the, either the mortgage advisor or someone sat down and said, hey, Adrian, you, need, you, know, you have the resources to be able to buy for your building. In fact, tell us about how you actually did it. Was it an FHA, VA? Uh, you know, how did you come up with the money to get into? What, what were some of the barriers that you had to face in buying your first home? I'm going to tell you two stories real quick. Uh, when I was with my first husband, we saved our money. And uh, so that means we didn't clean our clothes every time we took them off. Uh, to the cleaning bill. So we didn't have a cleaning bill. We wore them two or three times before we took them to the cleaners. We didn't eat out. We, we cooked our meals and we saved our money and made sure that all our bills were, were paid. And so we made a sacrifice. We had a plan. And that's why it's so important for um, people, the general public or people to have a vision. It's biblical, write the vision, make it plain on tablets. So we had a goal, we had a vision, and uh, we, you know, you have to ask, you have to believe, and then you receive. So the ask is to do your vision, to think about what do you really want. Then you have to believe that you're going to get it, which I always do, and um, uh, and then you receive it. It's just amazing how it it comes to you. It's it it's anointing. You know, it's anointed, you know, what can I say? So the key, and I do vision boards for a lot of um, high school students. I did them for my, my youngest daughter uh, when they were in college. I probably, one night I had about eight young folk at my home and I was feeding them lasagna and a glass of wine. I gave them a time level, a timetable to uh, cut out their their vision, whatever they want in magazines or bring what they, they want or print it out from the computer. And then I said, I need at least 12 things on your vision board uh, for this year. And every year you must do a vision board. What, what's the old saying? If you don't have a plan, then you plan to fail. So I'll tell you one other story. Uh, I had had a new car on my vision board for like two years. 
I got into a little uh, accident and my car was like 15 years old. I hadn't paid a car payment, but I did have the desire to have a car. So uh, uh, God moved me out of my way. I, I ran over some construction, something, and I messed up my whole front end. And um, guess what? The insurance company says, we're not repairing your car. Number one, it's too old, it has too many miles on it. I didn't want a car note. And uh, so they gave me the money they bought, you know, for my car, totaled it out, and I was able to buy uh, a newer model car. And uh, that vision of owning a new car that I had on my vision for two years finally came into fruition. And so that's why I say, you have to have a vision. What does your vision look like? Be honest with yourself. Um, the secret talks about that, you know, the number one thing is you have to ask, you have to believe, and then you receive. So um, I believe in asking. No, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, without a vision, uh, you're really not going anywhere, right? And uh, so you have to have a plan. You have, to, you have to believe that you can do it, but you also have to have real action behind it. And it sounds like you did. I mean, the things that you, 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 you described, like you didn't you know, spend a lot of money on cleaning your clothes or going out to eat. You prepared your meals at home. You didn't have a car payment. And so you were satisfied with buying a 50, driving a 15 year old car until you, you know, until, it, uh, until you had an accident. Thank God you're okay from that. Um, so you made some real sacrifices to be able to save your money to be able to buy this uh, first home. And so uh, you did a traditional loan, FHA, conventional. What did you do? We did a traditional loan. Okay. Uh, yeah. So a yeah. conventional we, loan. All right. Well, at that time, you know, prices weren't that heavy. I mean, um, that high. And so, you know, two saving together, two on the same plane. Uh, with the right mind, you can save uh, a lot of money if you pay attention and you you are a team and you do what you have to do in order to win. Now, Adrian, a little bit later in this interview, we're going to get into more of the specifics of those transactions uh, from your first, second, and on in okay. your journey of building wealth. Uh, but I, I want to now transition to some of the barriers because you're in the game. You've been in the community for a long time. What are some of the barriers that you see in our community uh, for people, uh, particularly African-Americans, uh, people of color, to be able to buy a home? What are some of the barriers? Eric, that's a great question. And I say knowledge is power. You've got the Internet. There's so many programs out there to help people to have home ownership. I mean, uh, the Golden State Down Payment Assistance, uh, FHA, Fannie Freddie. I mean, there is so much out here as far as knowledge and programs that, especially here in California and, and across the country, a lot of people are not taking advantage. The VA, oh, my vets, come see me, come talk to me, VA. It's a VA no-no, no down payment, no closing costs. You need about five grand to have a good faith um, down payment, and that will take care of um, your, um, your taxes and your insurance for the first year, but it's a wonderful program. And Eric, I am so sad and surprised that more vets don't take advantage of it. It, I mean, they can't they buy like one to four units, something like that. If, yes, or uh, one to two at least. They but, can buy up to four units with a VA loan, and it is it is underutilized. It's I, I know, it's, and that's what that is, so sad. Two percent, I believe, is the number of veterans that it, um, that have actually participated. Uh, and that's of the population of, of veterans. Uh, the the it's really pretty low. Uh, the amount of VA loans that are out there compared to the number of veterans that are active and are retired. It's just, it's not being taken advantage of. What, what are some of the other barriers? I mean, knowledge, you bring up a great point. Just not being aware of all the different programs that are out there to help you buy a home. But what are some of the other barriers that you see and, and that you counsel prospective buyers on in regard to preparing themselves to buy? 
Well, okay, so they have to know about a program. So we give them the plan to follow. And, and the other thing is number two is credit. Credit is very important. I, I, I told my girls, always pay your bills on time. And if you have a credit card of let's say $6,000 credit union, don't go over uh, two grand, you know, keep your bills low. And saving is important. And what I see a lot of the, uh, everyone now, since we're almost like a cashless society with the, uh, with the debit card, track your money. If you don't know where your money, how are you gonna win? So track your money, make a little sacrifice for a couple of years, but in the long run, you will win with home ownership. There's no doubt about it. And plus you're building generational wealth. You're building like a retirement for yourself. So I would say uh, lack of knowledge, our people will perish. Um, credit, keep that you need a 640, but I won't, don't want you to stop at a 640. Go for an 800, go for uh, over 700. You can get anything here in the United States with your credit, if you're credit worthy. So knowledge, saving, and, and guard your credit. And then the last thing I'll say, I love, different cultures that put their money together. And when I say that is that one person, they'll maybe two, two or three families are living in the same home and family number one, we're, they're gonna help them save their money and they buy a home. Then family number two, they all save the money and number two um, buys a home. So what I'm saying is maybe go in partnership with your brother, your sister, and you two buy a duplex, buy four units, buy something, but just to, rent is not gonna go down. Rent is always gonna go up, period. And the landlords have to raise it in order to keep up with inflation and the society, taxes go up, insurance goes up, the building is getting older. So I say, save your money, watch your credit and learn. You've got the internet, you've got Eric and myself, to help you on whatever program, and we can help you create your dream, your passion, and your vision. So that's what I would say. Those three things I, I think are extremely, uh, extremely important. They, they are important, and uh, they, are, uh, they are barriers uh, yeah. to a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people aren't willing to, as you mentioned, track their money. And so they don't save money at all. They spend, they consume everything they make. A lot of people have no regard to their credit, and, and, and at least in terms of, you know, how an understanding of how credit works uh, so that they can maintain scores high enough to qualify them right. uh, to uh, purchase a home under certain uh, maybe down payment assistance or closing cost assistance programs. And then the other barrier is that families uh, are, are not the same today as they were, you know, back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, even I would say the 70s or 80s when I grew up, where families were really supportive, and particularly in our community, in the African-American community, it's rare to see families working together uh, to support each other in the area of housing. Uh, but you see this all the time in the Asian and Latino communities where multiple families come together to purchase a home. Uh, and that I think has been and can be considered a true barrier uh, for our community as African American. We have got to learn to come together. Well, you know, Eric, uh, that is so extremely important. I feel so grateful that I was able to put my brother and his wife into their duplex and they live up near the uh, Miracle Mile and they have a ton of equity. My daughter, I put her in three units. She has paid off all her credit cards because of those units. And now she's working on her student loans and we're gonna have student loans right now. That's just the way of the world, but there's, they're going to, I've been told that there's going to be some programs that maybe we won't look at that student loan so heavily and help our young people into home ownership. But we must come together as one. You must buy, you know, and trade in your own community to help the community grow. Whatever community you are in, you know, 
you've got to help the community and and spend your money and track your money. That is so key. Adrian, what are some of the best money moves you made, uh, you know, in your journey to buy your first home and then your second and third, you know, what, were, what are some of the best money moves, strategies that you employ and that uh, you still employ today and you recommend to others? And I know that in the outset, you talked about some of the things you personally did in terms of really bringing your, your lifestyle uh, kind of in control and controlling your expenses. So um, give us some some money moves that could that anyone can do. That's a very good question. Uh, tracking the money is very important. You know, you need to know where every dollar you spend is going to go, and um, that's a very good question, Eric. Hmm, I have to think about that. But what I did was, um, I've always saved. You, you always have to save and um, stop spending in order to reach your goals and always have a plan. You know, I can't speak to that as much, you know. Now, when you talk about saving money, tell us about your saving plan. Did you utilize 401ks? Did you pay, you know, 10%, 20% off the top? I mean, how did you build your savings and how did you become disciplined to do so? I have it taken out of my checking account <laughs> every month. So when I put that check in, it goes strictly into uh, annuity or um, IRA uh, and a savings. So I have like three different avenues where I just, I just get the money out of my checking account because I do love to shop. I love beautiful, pretty things. So I discipline myself. But I've had a rude awakening uh, to stop buying. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pandemic, to do that for me, you know, and get in touch what's really important. And so um, I just 10%, you know, you, you give 10% to the church, you give 10% to your savings. You must always, I read a book once that said, always pay yourself first. And you know what? I think my father must have. Uh, subscribe my mom and my dad my mom always saved she didn't have much to save, but she always saved I remember when I was in college I needed money for books and mom had it and she said here honey I'll, I'll go to my savings and I'll take care of your books so I would say if you start off you know three percent five percent get on up to ten percent and save your money and then allocate where your money can work for you as you sleep. And if you're a trader, uh, they have foreign currencies you can trade on. You can do the stock market. I love the stock market. I'm into tech right now. Um, so I would say track your money, save your money and always have a plan. That, that's what I would say. Adrian, this has really been fantastic. And I, I really appreciate you sharing what you have done and what you are doing uh, to build wealth through real estate. In this final question for part one, before we go to break, uh, what are the top five reasons why everyone should do whatever they got to do to buy a home? The top five reasons, in your opinion. Eric, that was a good question. Let me give you my top five. Um, number one, it's for your family, for your kids, and it's a stable environment. Number two, it's an investment. Number three, it, you can write off on your tax. It's a write off. Number four, you're building generational wealth. You're going to pass this down to your children. You're going to teach them about home ownership and investment. It's a great, great thing. And the best part of all, you don't have to move. Okay. I love that. The fifth one is the best one. Yes, it is. It you know, really what you is. said earlier about uh, homeownership and the, all the things that can occur there reminds me of a poem that I wrote about homeownership. And I think you've heard me read that poem it's where people can poem. have birthdays and, and anniversaries and graduations and even memorials. Uh, celebration of life. Everything can take place at home. 
You're listening to The Power Is Now Homeownership Series with Adrian Bates with A1 Realty and Associates. And she is a real estate broker out of Los Angeles, California, and really sharing with us her journey to homeownership. We're going to take a break. When we come back, look out for more with Adrian Bates right here on The Power Is Now. There is nothing more exciting than the purchase of your new home. The Home Buyer Seminar is here to help you achieve the American dream of home ownership right now. We talk about access to lenders and nonprofits who are willing to give you the down payment for your home when others are not. That is right. The down payment assistance is not a loan, it is a gift. Find us at thepowersnow.com and let us talk about how you will own your home today and live the American dream. The future is now. Watch us live on Facebook every Tuesday or in replay on the Power Is Now YouTube channel. And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Power Is Now Homeownership Series. Uh, we are interviewing real estate agents and professionals about their journey into homeownership, the challenges they face, the barriers they had to overcome, uh, how they felt uh, when they made that first purchase. And we want to encourage everyone to become a homeowner in this month of June, which is National Homeownership Month. And we've been talking with Adrienne Bates, and she's been doing a fantastic job sharing her story and how she is really passing her knowledge and information on to her children. Adrienne, I want to take you back to that day you bought your first house. How did it, how did it feel? You know, did you, what did you do to celebrate it? Um, uh, did you consider it like a rite of passage from, you know, being a young person with little to responsibility to an adult now with big responsibility? Oh, Eric, that is so good. Um, I always owned units. And so when I married my, my daughter's father, it was just, we had the three girls in a duplex. How could you have three girls in a duplex with one bathroom? So we saved our money and um, we paid off some bills. And we st the irony of it all, I was looking for my sister-in-law. She had uh, two kids and had some grandkids. And we were looking in uh, the South Bay in Los Angeles. And I kept showing her houses and showing her houses. And my dream had always been, I always loved the Spanish stucco homes. I just loved them. Now I think I might want a modern home. But anyway, I fell in love with this house. She didn't want it. It was too dirty and it was a probate. So I found her a big four bedroom, three bath family room in the South Bay. She still lives, she, well, before she passed, she still, her family still lives in the home. And now they have second and third generation. And that's the family home. And that's what's so wonderful. How did I feel? So in my journey, looking for my sister-in-law, I found this beautiful Spanish stucco. After I finished showing her the property and said goodbye, I came back to the Spanish stucco home. I fell in love with it. The painters were in, in the, in the property painting because it was a probate. And the lady had owned, um, I talked to one of the neighbors, the lady had um, been sick and in the hospital for the last two or three years. And her father bought the home. It was built in 1940, bought the home for her. And she lived in the home for 47 years. How about that? Then I followed the home on the probate and, bought, and I even made an offer. You know, I'm a real estate agent. I made an offer on the home and uh, sent it downtown Los Angeles and got a note back saying that they were going to have an auction. So my husband and I, we parked the car, we walked up to the house, we saw, oh my God, there's all these people. He said to me, oh, I don't think we're gonna win the bid. I said, no, this is my house. And so I had prepared myself. I got uh, a home approved, you know, our loan approved. I had my cashier's check. I knew that I was gonna buy that home today, you know, that day, no matter what. So the, the bid started off with maybe eight people, then it went to five, then three, then two. And I outbid her. And then we won the bid. And my husband said, 
she made us pay $5,000 more. I said, but we won. And so that's how my journey began on home, um, owning my own home. And guess what? I'm still in it 32 years. We had uh, my, we've had everything here. Like I said, this is home. Uh, I tested my daughter after my husband died. I said, babe, I'm thinking about selling my home. She's it's like, no, mom, you can't sell the home. This is the family home. I want to raise my kids in this home. I said, oh, I was just testing you. So now I'm looking for units for her. She's not ready to buy a home. And uh, the only, I, I would not sell my home. I would either maybe take a loan and then buy another home or buy more units. But uh, don't do what I did. Get divorced and then you sell everything. I would say, buy the other one out and keep what you have because that's how you build generational wealth. You're absolutely right. You don't build wealth by selling real estate unless you are selling it to pull that equity into another property, you know, pyramid up. Uh, but what a great story. So you had to actually fight in a bid in, in an auction to get your home and you end up uh, paying five thousand dollars more than what you thought, or it, you know, the I guess the starting price was, but uh, you got the house. How did you feel that day, being a homeowner? I mean, uh, emotionally and you know, spiritually, uh, and in the, your community, how did you feel? I cried wow. <laughs> after we won the bid, and uh, they gave us our paperwork. I kind of teared up. I was so elated. And uh, my husband, he said, oh, we've got a lot of work to do, you know, because we had to renovate the home. But I can tell you, I was so overjoyed. I was um, immensely happy. And I love my home. And I tell you, I, 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 every 10 years, I change everything. <laughs> but I can because it's mine. That's right. You absolutely can because it's yours. Adrian, talk about your plans for your family uh, as it relates to homeownership. And, and this has kind of been uh, a reoccurring theme in all that you've said today. You know, you are big on family and making sure that everybody is a homeowner. And so what are your plans and what, what have you put in place to ensure that the wealth that you have created through real estate is being passed on to your children? Well, Eric, I try to counsel a lot of my uh, sellers and buyers. And when I meet people that own property, I always ask them, do you have a trust? Because a will does not do it in the state of California. And the trust is how you protect your family. And that's how you pass generational wealth. Look at the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, the Trumps that always passed on the property. They didn't sell. They passed on generational wealth. So I all, and how did they do it? By a trust. So if you buy a home like I did, I put it in a trust and I'm so glad I did. And that's how you avoid paying taxes to the state. That's how you pass on generational wealth with not, um, you pay for the house or get a small loan, but that's how you, you uh, succeed and passing on generational wealth. So please get a trust. That's what I always recommend. Adrian, you spoke about uh, helping your daughter and your children uh, to purchase a home, even your other extended family member, cousins and, and father-in-law. Uh, what are some of the strategies you would recommend to families uh, to utilize to come together and buy a home together? You know, what are some of the things they can do? I would say let's get together and have a family meeting and share some ideas and see who you can partner up with. Uh, for my daughters, I'm always here. For my nephews and nieces, I'm always here. And I believe in helping. And so as the elders, sometimes we have to help our young folk and maybe money or give them money. So when my uh, youngest daughter decided to buy her first um, piece of property at which units, I said, I'll give you X amount of dollars to help you. And when you get your tax return the next year, you can pay me back. And that's what we have to do. We have, because the prices are so enormous now, it's still 
a, a very good investment. But I would say uh, for the elders or for a brother or sister, help, help each other, help each other buy and set up a payment plan for how they can pay you back. And what I did is I lent my daughter 10 grand, I gave her 10 grand. And I said, now you have to pay me back five of it. But uh, when you get your income tax, and she did exactly that. So I would say if you're single, buy two to four units. And then when you get married, I would say buy a house. Or if you've always been your dream, I know several single, single, um, single people that own their own home outright. Uh, I would not say, you know, some people believe in paying it off and some keep a little small mortgage to have um, a write-off. But definitely buy now, now is the right time and come together and as a family and help each other out. That's what, that's what our, our parents and grandparents did. The village helped each other out. So if you've got a good friend, a cousin, a brother, a sister, a mother, a grandmother, whoever, go to them. I had a dear friend of mine, their grandmother, she said when her uh, grandchildren or children asked to borrow money, she said, when we go in this room, I'm not your grandmother, I'm your banker, and we're going to draw up a contract. So draw up a contract. You can put a lien on the house if you want after they own it. And um, if they refi or sell, they have to pay you back or do a contract how they will pay you back. So come together as a team and as a family and build generational wealth and stop spending your money and spend it on the land. The land is the most important thing. Please get that through your head. The land is important. We must build wealth. And how do you build it? By generational wealth and by home ownership. Adrian, uh, God is not making any more land. And so you're you. absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, we need to own it and build generational wealth. Uh, this has been an inspiring interview and I appreciate you so much for the great example you are in our community as a real estate professional, as a citizen, as an entrepreneur, a woman entrepreneur, uh, as a mother, uh, and setting the example uh, for your children. Uh, you're doing it all, Adrian, and I appreciate you so much for taking time out of your schedule today. Um, folks, if you're looking for an extraordinary real estate professional, I can't recommend, I, I don't, I, you know, I can't recommend anyone else, really, honestly. I mean, uh, in LA, someone that can really show you the way and help you, uh, then a VIP agent of the power is now, and that's Adrian Bates. And she is, uh, as you can see by this interview, she is an extraordinary person. Adrian, uh, final comments and thoughts uh, to those who are listening to the podcast, are watching this video. Final thoughts and comments about homeownership. This is June, Homeownership Month. This is Juneteenth, now a national holiday. Your final thoughts. Well, people will tell you always, uh, wait, wait, wait. What are you waiting for? The time is now, the power is now. And you can ask for any time you decide to buy is the right time for you. And now that we have interest rates so low, what goes down will always go up and buy now and build your generational wealth. And call me, Adrian Bates. I'm the broker for A1 Realty and Associates, where you are always number one. And I'm always here to serve you and help you in your journey to home ownership and financial freedom. Thank you. Adrian, before I let you go, uh, for the sake of those who are listening to the podcast, can you provide your telephone number and email address for them to reach out? To? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Eric. My, uh, my cell number is 323-333-8201. 323-333-8201. And my email address is Adrian Bates. Realtor, R-E-A-L-T-O-R, -E at Gmail. Adrian Bates Realtor, 
at gmail.com. And my office number, I forgot to tell you about that. The office number is so easy. It's 323-291-5900. 323-291-5900. And Eric, thank you so much for having me on your show. I love the power is now. And now is truly the time to buy, to move and do and be. And that's what the power of now, the power of now is for me now. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, another great interview on the Powers Now homeownership series with Adrian Bates. If you like this interview, please like us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel. But more important, share this interview. Somebody needs to hear what Adrian Bates had to say about homeownership. I certainly hope you will make homeownership a reality now, not tomorrow, but now. The past is gone. It's history. You can't do anything about it. And the present may never, the future may never come. All we have is the present to act on the opportunities that exist for us today. As Adrian stated, interest rates are incredibly low, and the opportunity to buy is now. It is not easy, but you can do it. If you're wanting more information about homeownership and uh, financing options that are available to you, please reach out to me, Eric Frazier, eric.frazier at fbol.com or eric.frazier at thepowerisnow.com. In addition to being the host of The Powers Now, I'm also a vice president and mortgage advisor with First Bank. My license number is 461-807. The views and opinions that I express on this show are my own and do not necessarily reflect that of First Bank. But we offer everything, folks, from down payment assistance to closing cost assistance, first-time homebuyer programs, VA, USDA, you name it, we have it to help you become a homeowner. And we lend in 49 states. So reach out to me. I'd be happy to assist you in any way I can. Well, remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. The power is now. Thank you for watching.